Welcome to Recombu, it's Basil here with two Samsungs. We have a Samsung Galaxy Nexus to my left hand side and to the right a Samsung Galaxy S3. Now the reason we're comparing both of them is because the Galaxy Nexus has just had its update to Android Jelly Bean. Now this enhances the Nexus with a host of UI improvements and in addition some really really nice performance tweaks as well. So to kick things off we're going to start with design. Now the Galaxy Nexus is our hands down winner with this one. Now it might not be as skinny as Samsung Galaxy S3 and it might not be as shiny but that's exactly why we love it. It's more understated and it's more nuanced laden. It packs a nice wedge shape, a slightly curved screen and it sits very well in the hand. It's not quite as glossy, has a buttonless fascia and generally just feels that little bit more considered than the Samsung Galaxy S3. That isn't to say the Samsung Galaxy S3 isn't a great looking phone, but it isn't one of the best out there. The smooth corners do feel very nice and it sits comfortably in the pocket, but we're not looking for comfort when we're looking for design flair. We're looking for something that really stands out, complements the operating system, and it's not quiet with the Galaxy Nexus on that one. Now in terms of the user interface, this is where it really is set apart. The Samsung Galaxy S3 has touch widths. This is Samsung's overlay on top of ice cream sandwich. Not the latest version of Android, Jelly Bean, that we've just loaded on the Galaxy Nexus, the slightly older version. Now touch widths is on top of ice cream sandwich, as we said, and offers a 3D transition laden um, user interface, which is very, very typical of Samsung. It's quite busy, it's quite heavy, not quite as heavy as the old versions of Samsung's TouchWiz, but it certainly isn't clean. Nowhere near as clean as stock Android. There are a lot of animations, as you can see on the unlock screen. We've got lots and lots going on. It really doesn't need to be this heavy. However, Samsung do put some very, very nice touches to it. For example, in the lock screen, you can get a host of news things. You can get shortcuts in your lock screen. You can unlock the phone straight into camera by putting your thumb on it and twisting so it takes you straight into camera and you're in position to take your shot very well. When you're in a text message, for example, if you simply put the phone to your ear, you'll also dial through straight to the contact. So while we're not overly um, keen on the whole UI's look and feel, we're definitely loving the fact that Samsung have introduced all these smart features and they definitely help in day-to-day -day use of the phone. Now in contrast, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus isn't laden with crazy, crazy smart features, but it is very, very clean and minimalistic. You have the tweakable shortcuts at the bottom, you have the on-screen um, keys, and you also have a new improved um, notifications bar. This bar allows you to access uh, your notifications either in a minimized format or an expanded view. The expanded view offers a full bleed preview of whatever your notification is. You can also share your notification directly from there to a host of clients, which is absolutely great, shortening the time from getting it onto Facebook, for example, or Twitter. On top of that, Project Butter pervades throughout the entire user interface. Now, Project Butter is an initiative by Google that, in, um, that makes sure you have 60 frame per second frame rate throughout the user interface. This looks fantastic. You can really notice with a uh, side-by-side -side between the dual-core Samsung Galaxy Nexus and the quad-core Samsung Galaxy S3. Despite being less powerful, the Galaxy Nexus looks that bit smoother. If we go very, very slowly, you can really see the two um, the stages at which the frame rate kind of lags a little bit. Whereas with the Galaxy Nexus, it's just totally buttery smooth, hence the name. That isn't to say the Galaxy S3 is slow. No, not by a long shot, but it just isn't quite as fluid or smooth. When it gets Jelly Bean, it should hopefully see exactly what we're seeing, if not more improvements than the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. There are some other tweaks with the widgets in the gallery, however, they are the main ones. And it's safe to say any Android purists out there should definitely opt for the Nexus, whereas anyone looking for a more consumer-based experience should probably be more comfortable with the Galaxy S3 and all its tweakages. Now, we'll quickly cover things like battery life and storage. So, um, battery life on both is great. You're going to get around a day out of them. What's more, if you take off the back covers, you can remove the battery 
carry a spare on you. When it comes to storage, both are available in 16 and 32 gigabyte variants. However, the S3 also comes in a 64 gigabyte variant. The Galaxy Nexus is non-expandable, whereas the S3 is expandable by micro SD card slot, giving you up to 96 gigabytes in total on your Samsung Galaxy S3. Now, when it comes to connections, they are both extremely well connected too. Both pack 3G Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi Direct. Really, you're not going to be wanting for anything with either of these devices. Performance-wise, again, dual-core, quad-core, but it really doesn't make all that much difference in day-to-day -day use. What you really see with the Nexus is Project Butter just being so, so smooth. The Galaxy S3 won't slow down per se. However, the skin is a little bit heavier than we would have liked it to be, so things like unlocking your phone from when we press the unlock button can take a little bit of time. As you've just seen, that's far longer than we'd expect, and certainly we don't see anything like that on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus with its lack of skinning. The only other thing really is Google Now um, and S Voice. So these are effectively um, voice activated personal assistants akin to Siri. Um, however, Google have managed to make Google Now a little bit more comprehensive. If we open up Google Now, we can actually see it's pulling information from where we are. So rather than ask it for the weather, it's gonna give us the weather straight off the bat. We can access S Voice by double tapping on the menu key. As you can see, S Voice pops up. Now we can ask it the same question across both and see what uh, the responses are going to be. So let's give it a go now. I'm not sure what you mean by Seattle Discover. Clearly I didn't say that, but hey, let's try this now. When did Barry White die? So clearly, Google Now is considerably faster. We're presented the information in a card. We can then swipe it out of the way, and then we can access all our information through Google. Now, S Voice is still thinking. Friday, July 4th, 2003. So it got the answer right. However, it was considerably slower. And on top of that, we're presented a Wolfram Alpha a set of information uh, details, we can't jump straight through to the Google results, which is a bit of a shame, because let's face it, when we want to Google something, we usually, when we want to find something, we do usually want to Google it. So all in all, we'd say that our personal favorite is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, just thanks to Jelly Bean, really. That's the key crux of it, and the design. We'd say the Samsung Galaxy S3 overall, however, is a better handset. It packs a much better camera, which we haven't touched on, but the 8 megapixel sensor is fantastic and the flash is great. It also, the user interface, gives you a lot more bang for your buck in terms of additional features. Once you get used to it, it really is fantastic. That said, we really love to be at the bleeding edge of technology. We'd love to have Android Jelly Bean on us at all times and really want to see how Google now fares in day-to-day -day use. So for anyone like us who considers themselves pretty techy and would like to have Android Jelly Bean, the Galaxy Nexus is a great handset and it's probably going to be a lot cheaper than the Samsung Galaxy S3 as well. That said, for the majority of people out there who just want a fantastic phone that does pretty much everything very well and is also expandable for all your movies and music, check out the Samsung Galaxy S3. Thanks for watching. Visit Recombu for more information and make sure you check out our weekly podcast, Baked, where you can get the latest news and info about mobile.